Alright, today we're going to be talking about evangelism, specifically exclusivism, because it talks a lot about why we emphasize evangelism, why we feel the need to evangelize. Uh, and before we talk about exclusivism, let's talk about the other three uh, basic understandings of who's going to heaven and stuff like that. There's not, of course, these aren't necessarily biblically based, these are just common things that people believe. So first there's universalism. This is probably pretty popular today in which it's the idea that everyone's going to heaven, whether they're religious or non-religious, everyone's going to heaven. So that's universalism, not based on scripture, it's just a concept. Then there is pluralism. Pluralism says, well, not everyone's going to heaven, but all religious people are going to heaven because all religions lead to heaven. Uh, so they say that all religions are true, which doesn't make sense because religions contradict one another, so it doesn't actually make that much sense. Then there's inclusivism. Inclusivism is the concept that uh, it's only through what Jesus did on the cross that someone can go to heaven. However, where they err is the fact that they say you don't actually have to believe in Jesus to go to heaven. Jesus died for your sins, so you can go to heaven, but as long as you believe in God, you're going to heaven. Uh, so the reason people believe this is because they look at people on the other side of the world, maybe places like India and stuff like that, where there's entire people groups that haven't even heard the gospel before. So they look at that and they say, well, is God going to punish someone? Is God going to send someone to hell if they never had the chance to accept salvation? So they say, well, as long as they believe in a God, as long as they look and say there's a higher being out there and they fear another, a higher being, uh, then they will go to heaven because of what Jesus did. Now, of course, that's not scripturally based. Uh, the scripturally based concept is exclusivism. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Exclusivism, like inclusivism, says that Jesus is the only way to heaven. There's no other way to heaven except through Jesus. However, unlike inclu inclusivism, exclusivism says you have to put your faith in Jesus because that's what the Bible says. Uh, it says, he that believeth on the Son is not condemned. Okay? But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the only begotten Son of God. So we see in Scripture it teaches that you have to put your faith in Jesus. That is absolutely essential. A lot of times you hear inclusivists say, well, uh, what about Cornelius? In the Bible, in Acts chapter 10, it talks about a man named Cornelius, a Roman centurion. He feared God, and that must have been enough. Because he feared God, he was going to heaven. The Bible doesn't teach that. I mean, it does teach that he feared God. But it teaches that because he feared God, God gave him an opportunity to accept salvation through Jesus. He told Cornelius through a vision saying, go find Peter and Peter will tell you what to do. Peter comes to his house, what does he do? He tells him about Jesus. He doesn't say, oh Cornelius, you're okay because you believe in God. He says, no, he talks about Jesus because he knows that he needs Jesus. And fortunately for Cornelius, he did respond to the gospel message. He did accept salvation. He was baptized after that as a, as a witness to his uh, newfound faith. Uh, he was baptized, he spoke in tongues, which was a gift from the Holy Spirit that was given to some. Uh, so it, it's obvious that believing in Jesus is essential. You have to do more than just fear God. Cornelius feared God, but that was enough. He needed Jesus, and God knew that, so he sent Peter to tell him. Then we see other stories about, uh, that's throughout the book of Acts, throughout the, the rest of the New Testament, God, or God is sending the disciples, he's sending missionaries out, and these missionaries are telling people, religious people, people who already believe in God, such as the Jews, the Romans, the Greeks, these, all of these people believe that there was a higher being, and according to inclusivists, that's all that's necessary. But according to God, that wasn't all that was necessary. They needed to hear about Jesus. Someone asked, a Roman asked uh, Peter, no, Paul, saying, what must I do to be saved? He said, believe in the Lord Jesus, and then you'll be saved. I mean, we're, we hear time and time again, you have to put your faith in Jesus. So then the question becomes, what about those who never have an opportunity to put their faith in Jesus? Those who never have an opportunity to accept salvation because maybe they're on an unreached people group, of, a people group who have never even heard of the gospel. What about them? Or is God going to damn them to hell? So then that's where the inclusivism comes in and says, no, oh, as long as they believe in God, they're okay. That's not what the Bible teaches. So then we think, well, can God, is God really going to damn someone who never had an opportunity to accept salvation? Is that really a loving God? It is a loving God, not because He damns some, but because He saves some. God doesn't have to save any of us. The fact that He saves one person from their eternal destination of hell is grace in and of itself. But it's not God's fault that people haven't heard about the gospel. It's our fault. We claim to be followers of Christ. We claim to love Jesus. But Jesus said, if we love Him, we'll keep His commandments. But what was his commandments? First, to love God. Second, to love your neighbor. 
And if you love your neighbor, you'll want to tell them about Jesus. And third was the Great Commission. It says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. It says, go, teach them all that I've commanded you. Make disciples of all the nations. Teach them. Baptize them. These were the, this was the commission of Jesus Christ. And we say we love him, yet we're not following it. It's not a suggestion. It's a commission. It's a command that we go and make disciples, that we go and tell them about the gospel. But we failed that. So it's not the fault of a loving God that people haven't heard the gospel. God has given us all the resources that we need to bring the gospel to the world. We have just been too lazy to do it. We've become so content saying, oh, well, as long as I'm saved, I'm okay. We need to emphasize bringing the gospel to the rest of the world. Because let me tell you something. If they haven't heard the gospel, how will they know about Jesus? And if they don't know about Jesus, how will they put their faith in Jesus? And if they can't put their faith in Jesus, then how will they go to heaven? The Bible says they need someone to preach it to them. If you want to understand more about the concepts of exclusivism, inclusivism, and pluralism, you can look up the book, Is Jesus the Only Savior? It's uh, by Ronald I Ronald H. Nash. Uh, it's emphasizing exclusivism. It's kind of arguing in defense of exclusivism. So if you want to read more about that, you're welcome to do that. Hopefully that kind of gives you a better understanding of why it's so important to evangelize. First, Christ commanded it. And second, those who don't hear the gospel, those who never have a chance to respond to salvation, they will unfortunately go to hell. And that's our fault because we haven't told them about it.